Gent Police, Sergeant Wells. Arbury Estate. Uh, that's the block at the end, is it, sir? I don't suppose you got the registration number, did you? No, no, you sit tight. We'll have a car over right away. Lambert, Arbury Estate. Who's the nearest? <laughs> Wayne, what's the problem? I've been calling you for the past ten minutes. It must be in a blind spot, or else the radio's on the blink. I've been checking the precinct. Another one of your bits of spare, more like. Ah, uh, fat chance of that. Yeah, 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 all right. Arbury Estate, we've got a hit and run. Arbury Estate, right. Sorry, it's confidential. Oh, sorry. Hi, it's me. Can you talk? Look, sweetheart, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it back tonight. Oh, hello, Constable. Are you still here? Oh, yes, you're fiddling my crime returns, aren't you? Getting on. Sorry to say it, God, but I just can't make any sense out of your figures. No, no, neither can I. Still, keep at it. Tell me something, do I look like a pervert to you? Sorry? Forget it. Oh, yes. Two more break-ins reported. Oh. I'll tell you what you do. Stick them in the unsolved robberies file. If that's full, shove them in the waste paper basket. You're not serious, of course. No, Detective Constable Webster, I'm not serious. Frost. Yes, Constable. Robbery at the Sherwood Club. At the Sherwood Club? <laughs> Will you take it, sir? Everyone else is out on this rape. Yes, well, I've had my cup of tea. Tell me, do I look like a pervert to you? Mike. Say a lot, do you? Sorry? You don't say a lot. I was brought up to speak when I had something to say. Sorry, gentlemen, members only. Armenian Express. 
tell Mrs. Bowman that the Sheriff of Nottingham has arrived, will you? Bowman, Archer. Sherwood, Forest. Sheriff. Forget it. Thank you. Glad to see there's still some money about. Are you a gambler, are you, son? Not me. It's a mugs game. Oh, it's you, Inspector. I wonder who they'd send. Play show, Phyllis. All the good coppers are out on a rape case. Which one is this? This? This is Detective Constable Webster, and he thinks gambling's a mugs game. Oh, yeah. Well, as you can see, I've really suffered. <laughs> yeah. Worst thing that could have happened to you, wouldn't it, Phyllis? The old man having a heart attack and popping off like that. The medical profession was dumbfounded, and that was just the private sector. He had the body of a 20-year-old. Mm, a bit too often, by all accounts. You know the story. I've been robbed. Yeah, sad. No, sad, Constable. What was the exact sum taken? Do you know? Do I know? Of course I bloody know. £5,138, it being Monday and one of our slack nights. What time was it? Just gone 11. Just gone 11? That was hours ago. Yeah, and you wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for my fat and idle solicitor who tells me if I want to satisfy my insurers, I've got no choice. So just take the details, then go to the bar and have a nice drink on the house, then push off and leave the investigating to me. Sorry, Phyllis. We like to beat up our own suspects. It's one of the few pleasures we got left. So, why don't you tell us exactly what happened? I've said. All I want you to do is... What happened? There are two security guards. Security guards, there's a laugh. One of them locks himself in here with the money while the other one brings the car round. Then he comes back, gives a prearranged knock on the door and they both go off with the money. So what happened tonight? What happened tonight is Russell, that's the one waiting in the office, opens the door and gets acid or something thrown in his face. By the time he's raised the alarm, the money and Keating, his partner, have both left the premises. So we both know who we're looking for. Don't we, Inspector? Hello, Leslie. It's your old friend, Jack Frost. How are you diddling? Mr. Frost. What time is it? Never you mind about that. I've been hearing about how you fought like a tiger to save Mrs. Bowman's money from being nicked. I didn't have nothing to do with it. I swear I didn't. I'm sure you didn't. Come on, tell me what happened. Me and Tommy are in the office, checking all the money's there, you know. And Tommy gets this call from reception, saying there's been a call from the hospital. His mum's been taken in. I wanted to ring back urgent. So he goes round to reception to make the call. Well, I didn't make the call from the office. It's the internal line only. Yes, all right, all right. Go on, so he goes round to reception. And I lock the door. A couple of minutes later, he gives a knock. I open the door. And it isn't him. Someone chucking stuff in my eyes. And terrible pain. I'm blinded and everything. I try to grab him. He's bashing me over the head. Bashed you over the knuckles and all, did he, Leslie? Yeah, well, she's a hard lady. Mm. Where are they, Leslie? Where's who? Tommy Keating and the 5,000. Sounds like a religious pop group, doesn't it? <laughs> I swear, we didn't have nothing to do with it. Oh, come on, called away on a mysterious phone call. Do me a favour. Yeah, all right, all right, we're stupid. I mean, his mum has been ill. I mean, Tommy's been worried sick about her. We just didn't think, you know. Besides... Besides what? Well, we didn't think it'd ever happen. I mean, who'd be crazy enough to cross Mrs Bowman? I mean, not me. And not Tommy, that's for sure. That's it, I'm starving. Let's go and get something to eat. <laughs> it's 
What are you doing here? I'm with a hit and run, sir. They're operating on him now. Mm. That's his wife. Slept through it all, apparently. Didn't even know he got out of bed until a neighbor knocked to tell her what had happened. Poor old cow. What's his chances? His skull smashed, he's hemorrhaging internally, and he's 72 years old. My husband. Mm -hmm. He's going to be all right, isn't he? Of course he is, love. He's going to be fine. Why is a horse? He's going to die. And you bloody well tell her. Do you know anything about this hit and run? Only that the poor old sod's in the hospital and it doesn't look like they'll be cooking him any breakfast. Uh, we just had the computer feedback on the number plate. Car belongs to Roger Massey. Roger Massey? What if we can pull that little tow rag? The whole evening won't be wasted. Cheers. Uh, hang on, hang on. He phoned in to say his car had been nicked. Oh, surprise, surprise. What time? Uh, 11.24. And what time was the old boy knocked down? Just before 11. No. Oh. <laughs> So he knocks someone down, and then he phones in to say his car's Nick. We're not going to fall for that one, surely. Well, it's possible, Jack. Could have left the car, come back, found it been... Oh, yes. Well, if he did, we'll find out, won't we? Don't you think he ought to phone Mullet? Why? Oh, come on, Jack. You know why. Just because the little sod's mother's an MP? Not only that, there was all that troll before. You know there was. Why don't you let someone else handle it? Because I don't like being leaned on. That's why. Where's Shelby? Toby! Blimey, Gov, you frightened the life out of me. What have you got in there? The Crown Jewels? Yeah. Mm. Look, this hit and run, any chance that anyone could identify the driver? Oh, doubtful, sir. By all accounts, the car had tinted windows. No, well, the owner reckons that his car was nicked, so I want these details checked, double-checked and checked again. Is it all right if I have a cup of tea first? No, love? do it now. Bad place to rest your weary head, is it, Sonny? What's the plan? Close your eyes, lower your head, and charge. I don't know, I haven't given it much thought. Go in, chat him up, see what happens. What lane's he in? Young Roger. He's a property consultant. His mummy bought him his own business. No other bugger would have him. I take it he's not on your Christmas card list. Oh. He's arrogant, he's nasty, and he gets away with murder. Because of who his mother is. Money and privilege, my favourite colour scheme. Hundred years ago, he would have been riding around on his big black horse, half pissed, enjoying himself, knocking down the local peasants. Now he does it in his big black limo. Come on, come on. You'll be fast asleep at this time of night. After what he's done, no way, son, you don't sleep. You stay awake polishing up the lies you're going to tell the fuzz when they turn up. If you want answers, there's not much we can do about it. You reckon? Denton Police. I'm phoning from outside that new block of flats. S sorry, sir, can I...? I said I'm phoning from outside that new block of flats, Halley House in Beach Road. There's someone on the fourth floor. The fourth floor balcony trying to break in. Can I have your name, please, sir? Hey? No. Inspector Frost, come in, please. Frost. Lambert here, sir. We've had a report of somebody trying to break into the flats at Halley House. You're near there, aren't you? Fairly close. He won't like it, you know. He could be in there with his head bashed in. He could be out. There is that, certainly. Well, my job's worth to upset him. 
His mother's a member of Parliament, you know. Get away. Comes here quite often. Real lady she is. Always gives me a friendly nod. Anyone climb up the balconies from the outside? Well, oh, these cat burglars, they can get up anywhere when they put their mind to it. All right, we'll take it from here. Thank you, sir. I can't have you go. No, no, no. See, the thing is, he could be armed. And I can't expose you to any sort of danger. It's more than my job's worth. Uh, yeah, right. Thank you, sir. Uh, by the way, if you hear any gunfire, dial 999. Can you hear someone groaning? Quite right, so can I. Mr. Massey! Mr. Massey! He's not here. Let's go. Patience, son. We ought to leave. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't. But Master Roger should. According to the car theft report, he was just off to bed when he remembered he'd left his briefcase in his car. But when he went downstairs, surprise, surprise, the car had vanished. So, why isn't he here crying his eyes out? Hmm? Oh, look, here he is, look. That's him with Mummy. If you look carefully, you can still see the umbilical cord. What are you looking for? Don't know. Bits and bobs. This and that. Anything will prove that he's a liar, which he is, especially where motor cars are concerned. He must have two of them. Anything else? No, just Mr. Newman and your appointment at the town hall. Give me some coffee, would you? Oh, and Sophie, close the door on your way out. That's a good girl. <sighs> yes? There's a Mr. Longford for you, the editor of the Denton News. Put him on. Good morning, Mr. Massey. Sandy Longford, Denton Evening News. We have met, actually, with your mother. Yes, I do remember, Mr. Longford. What is it you want? I was hoping you'd give me a statement about last night. All I know is that my car was stolen. I understand that the victim is in a very serious condition. A victim? What victim? The hit-and-run victim. Didn't the police tell you? Now, Mr. Hickman, they don't expect him to... <laughs> Good morning, Sergeant Johnson. Good morning, sir. How's your neck? Much better, sir. At least my back, actually. No, oh, I thought it was your neck. No, sir, that was last time. You know, it's only just struck me this morning how incredibly dreary this lobby is. Oh, yes, sir. Hmm, needs cheering up. It's bad for public relations. See if you can't get hold of some flowers or house plants or something. Yes, sir. Good idea, sir. Good. Good. I'm a copper, not a bloody landscape gardener. Well, you wouldn't be, would you? Up at your back.
Frost. It's Johnny. Oh, hello, Johnny. How's your neck? It's my back, not my neck. Anyway, Mullet wants to see you. Too sweet. Oh, I thought he might. Someone's told him about Roger Massey, haven't they? You should have told him yourself, Jack. You know all that trouble there was before? No, no, but don't you start. Tell him I'm ever so sorry, but I'm popping round to see if Tommy Keating is still in residence. Please yourself. see a film tonight? I'm working. thought you had time off. It's been changed. Well, I might go on my own then. I wouldn't start tarting the place up. I'm putting in for a transfer. We've only been here six months. Why this time? I don't like it here. I don't like the people I'm working with. All right. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't want it to be like this, all right? What are we going to do, Roger? I'll look after it. I promise. I would have said. I really would have said. I know. I know. All right, Constable. Amaze me. Well, sir, if Keating came home last night, his landlady didn't hear him. Mind you, she says she never hears him. He usually comes in between four or five in the morning. I had a look in his room. It's been torn to pieces. And she didn't hear that either. Presumably, whoever did it was looking for the money. Not just the money, Constable. Mrs. Bowman is a very spiteful lady. He who pinches my purse steals trash, but he who filches my good name gets both his legs broken. That reminds me, my washing machine's up the spout again. Obviously, I had to tell you. But please, I don't want you to get involved. Of course I'm involved. You're my son. Do you really think they'd keep me out of it? My God, they'll have a field day, just like they did the last time. You and your damned cars. If your father was here... Well, he isn't here, is he? Swear to me that you had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. Do you know anything about this hit and run? Only that Roger Massey was involved. Ah, well, that's not certain. He claims the car was stolen. <laughs> Balls. Jim, any half-decent QC will tear a badly prepared case to ribbons. I can't allow that to happen. But if we get a good prosecuting counsel, it won't happen. You know what I'm trying to say, Jim. Don't make me spell it out. I think you better, sir. I'm concerned that the wrong officer may be in charge of this investigation. Well, you're not suggesting someone else should take over, are you, sir? Because a lot of people might see that as being, shall we say, influenced by external pressure. I'm trying to preserve the reputation of this force. Then I'm sure you'll give Inspector Frost all the support he requires. I know the rest of us will, sir. Mullet in, is he? He's got someone with him. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Stella Massey. The little tinker. He said he didn't want to be disturbed. But he did. Through no fault of his own, my son has been involved in this unfortunate hit-and-run business. He wasn't driving, he wasn't in the car. But we can imagine the headlines, can't we? 
son of law and order MP Butcher's senior citizen in hit and run. Now, you know I'm not asking for special treatment. But what I do ask for is a fair and unbiased investigation. Mrs. Massey, if your son is innocent, then we shall prove it. That's all I ask, that you do your duty without prejudice and without malice. You wanted to see me, sir? Yeah, not now, Frost. Oh, sorry, sir. I didn't know you had... Oh, it's you, madam. How nice to see you again. How's the world at Westminster? Keeping you out of mischief, are they? Uh, Mrs. Massey is here about her son. Oh, yes. This is all very embarrassing, Inspector. Not for me, it isn't, madam. To come straight to the point, I am concerned that your personal dislike of my son should not cloud your professional judgment. Personal dislike? Oh, come now, Inspector. Twice in the past. Twice in the past, your son has been charged with reckless driving. And twice in the past, he's got away with it. Sorry. He's been proved not guilty. He was not guilty. And if he's not guilty this time, I shall be the first one to give him a lollipop. As I said before, Mrs. Massey, I have every confidence that Inspector Frost will carry out this investigation. Innocent until proven guilty, Inspector. Quite right, madam. And the day that I think otherwise is the day I take an early bath. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I've got to go and see if I can locate a missing witness. It's only a security guard. No one of any importance. You do know that Mr. Massey and his solicitor are waiting downstairs, do you? No, I didn't, sir. Thank you very much for telling me. I won't keep them a moment longer. At 11.15 p.m., I realised that some papers I needed were still in my briefcase in my car. Ah, oh, yeah. At 11.20, I went down to where I'd left my car, a Ford Cosworth, registration number J956CYE. To my concern, the car was not there. <gasps> Poor little soldier. I presumed it had been stolen, so I immediately informed the police. I then returned to my flat and went to bed. Oops, there goes another one. The first I knew about it, the hit and run was when a newspaper reporter oh, telephoned oh. me at my office this morning. I was extremely distressed and I immediately contacted my solicitor and arranged to come to the police to help them in whatever way I can. Oh, now that's sweet. Isn't that sweet? I've waited long enough. I'm off. Your mother would prefer to wait. Sorry to have kept you waiting, gentlemen, but pressure of business. I understand you've got something to tell us, Mr. Massey. Presumably you've already had sight of my client's prepared statement. Yes, yes, I have. And uh, very nicely typed it was, too. Oh, before we proceed, I've got some good news for you, Mr. Massey. We found your car. Yes, it was parked in a lay-by near the leisure centre. Not too badly damaged, either. Just wash off all the blood and brains and it'll come up like new. Naturally, we're pleased at the recovery of the car, but my client is most distressed that while it was stolen and out of his possession, it was involved in this unfortunate hit and run. Stolen. Stolen. Oh, that's what happened to it. Now, look here. I've got better things to do than sit here listening to a minor public servant exercising his well-known and cheap sense of humour. No doubt Mr. Hickman's got better things to do than lie in a hospital with tubes coming out of every orifice. But some of us can't pick and choose, can they, Mr. Massey? Right. That's it. I've made my statement. I'm going. Just one or two minor points before you go, Mr. Massey. It won't take a moment. Please sit down. Thank you. There's an underground car park at the block of flats with electronically controlled gates. We wondered why your client didn't use it. It's all right. I do use it. Not always, it depends. On what, sir? On how idle I'm feeling. Satisfied? When we found your car, the briefcase wasn't in it. You said you went to your car to fetch the briefcase. I think that before Mr. Massey answers any more questions... I've told I... you it's all right. Presumably it was taken by the thief. Of course. A briefcase full of office papers, a very valuable commodity. That reminds me, how many briefcases have you got, Mr. Massey? One. How many do you think? Oh, I don't know. You know Christmas presents, things like that. 
Well, I think that's all, gentlemen. Just one more thing, Mr. Messi. I noticed from your statement that you said that after you had reported your car stolen to the police, you returned to your flat and you went to bed. That's right. Tell him, Constable. <clears throat> you may not be aware of it, sir, but in the early hours of this morning, we received an anonymous phone call reporting that a man had been seen trying to break into the balcony window of a fourth floor flat. It was your address. No, I wasn't aware. But how does it concern me? Because when we investigated the incident, we checked all the flats on that floor, but we couldn't get a reply from you. So, fearing for your safety, we got the passkey from the caretaker and entered your flat. Happily, there was no sign of an intruder. But there was no sign of you either, sir. And your bed hadn't been slept in. Are you saying you had the temerity to break into my private flat? I've explained the circumstances to you, sir, and I'm sure that you would be the first to complain if a public servant such as myself failed in his... You bastard. You cunning little bastard. At this stage, we've nothing further to say, Inspector, and if you don't mind, I'd like a word with my client in private, since I may have misunderstood his instructions. I'm not having... We have to... nothing further to say until we have reconsidered our position. And I shall leave you to reconsider your position. Oh, yes. And I think it's only fair to mention. So we can get all the porkies over in one hit. We've got a witness the senior client to drive his car away from the block of flats yesterday evening. I'll send in a cup of tea and some aspirins, shall I? Witness! What wetness? Well, why should he be the only one allowed the occasional porky? Look, I don't want to get involved in this. We should do things that oh, late stop way. being so bloody prissy. If you don't like my methods, you go upstairs and complain. He'll only be too pleased to listen. In the meantime, you buck your ideas up. You're getting on my nerves. Look, I've got to go. I don't know, I don't know. Look, I'll speak to you later. You're gonna have a lie in. I was. They rang. They want me in. Does that mean you won't be on tonight? <sighs> Depends, but I wouldn't bank on it. Oh, David! Yeah, I know, I know. But think of the overtime. Well, you do so much overtime. We'll need it soon, won't we? Hey, little man, we'll need it. Are you going now? Soon. I'll make you a sandwich. Nah, it's all right. I'll get something at the canteen. You know the latest, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mullet wants vases of flowers in the lobby. Stuff the manpower, let's have more flower power. <laughs> Jack, about this Roger Massey business. Well, Roger, more all right. I'll handle it with kid gloves. Scouts on my... Hmm? <laughs> yeah, well, watch your back. All right, thanks. You right, George? Uh -huh. <clears throat> that reminds me, Tommy Keating. See if you can find out where he's gone, will you? Any pointers, Gov? Yeah, well, if it was me, I'd start at Greenland and work up. Hmm. How's your love life? One of these days, someone's going to chop your hands off. I'm sorry I spoke. Right, I'm off. I want to get something for my car. Oh, wouldn't like to pick up a prescription for me, would you? Charlens. It's all paid for. Certainly so. What do you make of Webster? He's an unhappy man. He's unhappy? He's bloody morose. I hear he's put in for a chance for yeah, already. He's only been here five minutes. A little family problem, isn't it? When isn't it? Ooh. Ooh. Right, right. <clears throat> How's business? Mr. Massey was not at his flat last night. He spent the night elsewhere. Mind telling us where, Mr. Massey? I was with a girl. Why didn't you tell us this before? Because 
Because it was difficult for me. My, my mother doesn't approve. Oh, your mother doesn't approve. All right. Look, I'm trying to tell the truth, all right? How long were you with this girl? From about half six yesterday evening until a little after eight this morning. The car was stolen from outside her flat. I didn't want my mother to know, and so I... All right, I panicked and I lied. I had no idea the car had been involved in a hit and run when I phoned the police, or I would never have tried it on. No, of course you wouldn't. Mr. Massey was with the young lady all night. They didn't go out. And she will, of course, corroborate all this. We would prefer that she was not involved, but um, if necessary, yes, of course. Look, about what I said earlier, I was out of order. I apologize. That's all right, Gov. I hear you got some problems. Look, if there's anything that you want to do... There you are. Shall I pick her up now? No, 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 no. Wait until she gets inside. We might get a cup of tea and a biscuit. How do you mean, I've got some problems? Come on, son, it's obviously you're unhappy. I mean, why else would you ask for a transfer? I told you I put in for a transfer. I just heard, that's all. That's supposed to be confidential. Yeah, well, you know what it's like in the nick. Word goes around quicker than yesterday. But it's personal. Nobody's business but mine. All right. All right, son. Fair enough. Not another word. Last night. That was my night off. He came round and we stayed in. All night? All night. What time did he arrive? About half past six. He was going to go home at about ooh, quarter past eleven. But when he went downstairs, his car had been stolen. Well, that must have upset him, cars being his pride and joy. He certainly wasn't pleased. Anyhow, that's how he came to spend the night, all right? His mother doesn't approve of you. Why is that, I wonder? I've no idea. Maybe it's the colour of my eyes. Mm. Now, unless there's anything else, I have to get ready for work. What is your work, Miss King? I'm a croupier at the Sherwood Club. Well, well. Ooh. She was robbed last night, Mrs Bowman. Robbed? You've made my day. Now, are you going or what? You carry on. I'll sit here and think. Please yourself. How long have you known him, Mr. Massey? About a year. I met him at the club. So he's a punter then, is he? He's a member, if that's what you mean. Yes, you see, that's what surprises me when you said that you stayed in all night. What I know of young Roger can't sit still for five minutes. He likes to go out. He likes expensive restaurants, loud music. He likes knocking people down in his fancy car. He likes getting silly young girls to provide him with an alibi. I find you incredibly offensive. Oh, get in the queue, Miss King. I find toffee-nosed young yobs who kill innocent old nobodies offensive. Kill? What do you mean, kill? Oh, you didn't know he was dead? Don't tell me your boyfriend didn't bother to check that out before getting you to fake his alibi. Or perhaps you were with him in the car. Is that it? Were you with him? It's true. The old man died early this afternoon. The thing is, Miss King, would he lie for you? He arrived here yesterday evening and stayed with me until 8 o'clock this morning. Now, please, leave me alone. You want to see me, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
I want you to show me exactly where you found this number plate. Over here, Gov. Right. Now, were the two bits together or what? No. Uh, this bit mm -hmm. was about here. Yeah. And this one about here. Right. Must have snapped off when the car hit that lock. How many number plates do you know that have fallen off? No. It's too bloody convenient. Do they look for the screws like I asked? Yes, sir. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shelby. Thank you. Hey! Stop him! Stop him! What's the matter, love? What is it? I need to speak to that young policeman. He's the only one who's been in, you see. In where, love? My flat. Last night, after the accident. He's the only one who could have taken it. Could have taken what, love? My jewellery. I've been searching for it all day. It was in here, you see, in my little box. I always keep it in my little box. And you say the constable came in to use the telephone? Yes, he sat there, right next to the drawer. Well, the thing is, love, if he'd taken anything, you would have seen him. But I wasn't in here, you see. He asked me to go outside. He asked you to go out of the room while he made a telephone call? Yes. He said it was confidential. Right, well, i tell you what I'm going to do for you, Mrs Lee. I'm going to get someone to come round here and have a word with you so that you can make an official complaint. And you are sure that a constable has been the only person in here? Oh, I am quite sure. What do you think? You wouldn't be the first cop with sticky fingers. No, I don't reckon it. He's a pretty lousy copper. I can't see him nicking things off little old ladies. On the other hand... On the other hand what? Well, last night when I went to talk to him, he was by his locker and he shut the door really quick like he was worried in case I saw something inside. <laughs> no. Don't believe it. Maybe somebody should take a look and find out. Ooh, all right. Take my keys, then. It's a key for every occasion on that bunch. <laughs> what, search a fellow officer's locker without his permission? You've changed your tune a bit, haven't you, son? I don't like people that take what isn't theirs. Copper or no copper. Yeah, well, it's not up to us now. It's up to the complaints department. In the meantime, let's keep shtum about it, all right? All right. Yeah, Gov. All right. No, Jim, that number plate was deliberately removed and chucked out at the scene of the accident so the dumb fuzz would find it. Oh, Katie. Thank you, sir. Yeah, but why would he do that? I mean, what's the point? Yeah, if Massey was driving, agree, but supposing someone had nicked his car, you know, someone who wanted to, to get him into trouble. Yeah, like who? Well, try this for size. The girl said, that he likes to bet with Phyllis Bowman. Now suppose, just suppose, he's run up a dirty great big gambling debt that he can't pay. So, she puts the screws on young Roger by getting one of her cowboys to nick his car, drive around the countryside, you know, causing a lot of trouble, throwing the number plate out of the window so that we know who we're looking for. I.e. warning Master Massey that there is worse to come if he doesn't pay up. But, but, it all goes wrong. Because the cowboy knocks down the old man. He panics, dumps the car and legs it. The car was found near the casino, if you remember. Well, there's a lot of loose ends, Jack, but I suppose it's possible. Yes, because the only trouble, if my theory is correct, that makes Master Massey innocent, which goes against all natural justice. <laughs> Meg Mullet happy, though. God! Oh, it's even worse. Just gonna pop round the corner for a pint.
do you want? Just a couple of days, all right? You're in trouble. Just a couple of days. Suppose the car's nicked, is it? You're nothing but bloody trouble. Get rid of it. I don't want it here. Very briefly, criminal intelligence believes we have an armed man on the patch. Ronald Arthur Eustace. Now, he lived here in Denton until about eight years ago, so some of you will have had dealings with him. I know you have, Jack. That's right. This afternoon, he was one of three men involved in an unsuccessful bank raid in London, in the course of which the security guard was shot. They split up, and as I say, Eustace is believed to be heading in this direction. Now, he's armed with a shotgun and believed to be driving a stolen red Renault 5, registration number E391PNW. Although, chances are he's ditched it by now. I'm asking the assistant chief constable to rubber stamp the issue of firearms to authorised officers. Anyone here? Right, as soon as you get the word, report to the armoury. And remember, all of you, if seen, he's to be approached with caution. I want all sightings reported immediately to control, and what I don't want are any bloody heroics. Understood? Sure, yeah. Right, that's it. Ronnie Eustace, eh, Jim? Oh, dear. He must be coming up in the world. You know, the last time I pulled him was for blagging a sweet shop. <laughs> Always was a bit of a nutter. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes? Sorry to bother you, but uh, we've got a Mr Gordon from County on the phone. It, it seems that the uh, absence of your crime statistics is uh, holding up the computer returns for the entire country. Are they really? <laughs> Go on. Where the hell have you been? Listen. You're upset. You've a right to be upset, but there are things I had to do. You do know he's dead, do you? You do know that old man's dead. You do know what we've done, do you? Miss King, I'm Stella Massey. Come and sit down. Why don't you? There you go. Thanks, Sergeant. DC Webster. Sign there, please. You and Tommy Keating are using the same decorator. She didn't have to do this. Why'd she have to do this? One way or another, she thinks that you've dented her reputation. I used to be in the fight game. I mend. This is my home. This bloke that attacked you. Now, are you sure there's nothing else you can tell me about him? Like I said, it happened so you fast. Think, no, think, Leslie, think. His face. Come on, tell me. You must have caught a glimpse of his face. The lights were out. He turned the lights out in the corridor. Yeah. Come on. His eyes. Now come to think of it, his eyes. His eyes? What do you mean? Did he have one blue, one brown? Or... No, I don't know what colour. Just remember seeing his eyes, because the rest of his face was covered. A hat, yeah, maybe one of those pull-on hats. And a scarf, like, pulled up like a mask. Gloves. Definitely gloves. Yeah, and a watch. Watch? Yeah, a watch. Well, what do you mean, a watch? Did he go TikTok or what? No, when he chucked the stuff in my face, I grabbed that instinctively. I grabbed his wrist, like his left wrist. He had on one of those big watches, you know, with the big heavy metal straps. Yeah, we, we danced about a bit. The strap broke. I felt it. Heard him cursing. Then he, he, he hit me up. You've been most helpful. All I've got to find is a bloke with two eyes, a woolly hat, a scarf, a pair of gloves, and a broken watch. Oh, yeah, 5,000 quid.
Do you want me to do anything about this? What's the point? This is Shelby. I've just been checking the Manson place. Are you getting me? This is Shelby. Phyllis? Have you got my money back yet? No, not yet. Anyway, you've been up to your old tricks again, haven't you? Knocking down doors, breaking up furniture, and you promised me you wouldn't. Okay. I'm sure you're far too busy to stay for a drink. Do you know Roger Massey? Why? Look, just answer yes or no, Phyllis. It's important. Of course I know him. He's one of my regulars. Knocks around with one of my girls. How's his luck? He's a punter. He wins some. He loses more. Oh, so he's a good customer, then, isn't he? He is when he wins. When he loses? He needs a little nudge. Oh. Has he had one recently? Well, as it happens, I did have occasion to send round one of my account executives to remind him of his obligations. And? Mr. Massey apologised for his regrettable oversight and immediately wrote out a cheque in full settlement. When was this? What's today? Tuesday? So it would be Friday. Five days ago. If he paid Phyllis her money back five days ago, she'd have no need to set the dogs on. Yeah. All right, I was wrong. It's just that bloody number plate, Jim. It, it just doesn't figure. How are you doing with her robbery? Well, whoever pulled it, certainly knew all the systems. Even knew old Tommy Keating's mum was in hospital. It's got to be an inside job. You still don't fancy the two security guards? No, I just don't see it. I mean, if they were going to stitch her up, they would have picked her up and she'd got at least 20 grand in the till. Listen, it may be nothing, but Shelby's gone missing. He what? What do you mean, gone missing? Well, he's supposed to sign off half an hour ago. He's only doing a part shift, but he hasn't shown up. So I get him on his radio? He's not answering. And according to Lambert in control, he hasn't made any sort of contact in the last two hours. You can't lose a copper in a patrol car. Yeah, you know what I'm worried about, don't you? What if he's come up against this lunatic with a shotgun and got himself into trouble? He wouldn't go in on his own. He'd, he'd call for backup. Oh, I don't know, Jack. Some of these young coppers fancy their chances against anything. Yeah, well, you can tell him from me it's a mug's game. Yeah, and besides, his radio's been on the blink all week. I mean, we thought it was much of his fun and games. That's why we weren't too concerned earlier. But if it is on the blink, then he has come up against this bloke. Well, have you tried his home? He might have gone there. And not without sign off first, he wouldn't. <sighs> no, I'll try Mrs. Shelley anyway. I want you some tact. We don't want her worried unnecessarily. 
In the meantime, we take no chances. You better cancel or leave and get the off-duty men in. We'll have to organize a full-scale search. Oh, to Christ, we're wrong. Who's gonna break the news to Mullet? patch of blood over there so it looks like he was shot either moving to or away from the other car no sign of him well I'd better get back and organize things I'll leave it to you then all right Jack yeah. Sir. Taking photographs of this yet? We're coming this side now. Right, get on with it. Where the hell have you been? I went home. You know I did. Not according to your wife, you didn't. My wife? Why is it talking to you? It's like pulling teeth. I phoned, she said you weren't home. Yeah, right. I was on my way back to the station. So. What? We found him. All right, son, go on, go and get a cup of tea. What's he doing down there, then? He must have crawled away. Get some help. Fall down the slope. Well, with half his head missing, he crawls 200 yards. Possible, I suppose. The instinct to survive, turning men into supermen. So they say. Have they found anything? It's what they haven't found that interests me. There's not a drop of blood in the car. Rear windscreen blasted to pieces, hundreds of shotgun pellets everywhere, but not a drop of blood. Presumably he was already out of the car. And why fire the shot? Maybe... Maybe it was a warning not to try anything. And then shoots anyway. Not very sporting of him, was it? Well... Well, it's impossible to be precise in these conditions, but... I guess he's been dead between three and four hours. And then again, I think the post-mortem will confirm this. I'm pretty certain he was dead before he was dumped. Well, he wouldn't have survived long with these injuries, anyway. Let me move him. Uh, if you wish, yes. Uh, pathologists won't be able to do very much with his ears. Right, I'll let you have my port as soon as possible. All oh, right, thanks. All right, you lot, come on, get on with it. Come on, tell him out of there. Somebody's got to tell his wife. I'll do it. With due respect, sir. I understand she's pregnant if she sees a divisional officer turning up on the doorstep. Well, you know what I mean. Yes. Yes, you're right. Well, I've met her a couple of times. I mean, if you want me to, uh, you know. Thank you. Have you met her? Do you want to do it? Hey, 
je veľmi divné. Why didn't you come to bed? One of her blokes was shot last night. Is he dead? Looks called Shelby. You met him actually. At that retirement do. As I remember, you had a dance with him. Dave Shelby. Bit of a ladies' man by all accounts. I haven't offered you a cup of tea. I should have offered you a cup of tea. No, that's all right, love. What about you? Do you want a cup of tea or something? No, no. I'm fine, really. Come on, Here we go. He loved his work, you know. That's why he did so much overtime. He said it was for the money, but I know it was more than that, really. It's the job. Well, you'd know that as much as anyone. Policemen. They're all the same, aren't they? He was a good man, you know. I know everyone says that, but I couldn't have asked for a better husband and father. He bought me flowers every week, you know. Ever since we've been married, a great big bunch of flowers every Saturday without fail. I always knew there was a chance something might happen to him. Well, I mean, in your job. We used to talk about it sometimes. And he said if anything did happen, then he wanted me to... to tell his parents. It'll break their hearts. Oh, God. Oh, Hello, Jack. How's she taking it? Not now, Sandy. How's she taking it? Look, I've just told her that her husband's been shot dead. This is not a time for a newspaper interview. Oh, come on, Jack. We all got a job to do. You just leave her alone, all right? You just leave her alone. David Shelby was a young officer, a young husband and father, with a promising career ahead of him. He was one of us. I can assure you that whoever killed him will be caught and punished. That's all. Thank you. 
Seven years in a cell with your own TV. Some bloody punishment. I wonder if she knew what kind of a bloke he really was. You stand there listening to all that wonderful husband and father stuff and you think, you poor cow, if only you knew. Maybe you do know. Maybe he was a wonderful father and husband. The sort that can compartmentalise. Lead two lives that don't cross, Jekyll and Hyde without the complications. Yeah, I suppose so. And what the eye doesn't see, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Most of the married men I know depend on it. Sounds a bit bitter, Constable. No, sir, just realistic. He tried it with me once. It would have been quite flattering about knowing he tried it out with everyone. I mean, you expect to get chatted up. And most of the times you can handle it, but with him, I don't know. There was just something really unpleasant about him. What do you mean, unpleasant? I did a stint of night duty with him, in the car. And of course he started chatting me up, which I could handle. And then it got dirty, the things he was saying. He asked me if I wanted to have a look at some of his special photographs. Photographs he'd taken of girlfriends before, after and during, you know what. That was his big kick, apparently. And suddenly it was getting heavy, and I started to feel very uneasy, and I had to say to him, listen, I don't want to hear this, any more of it, and I'll report you all right, and I meant it. And he turned it into a joke. He was very good at turning things into a joke. The great salve to the male ego. I was only kidding. Why are you getting so upset? I don't even fancy you. After that, he just went through the motions. The odd grope, the odd suggestive remark. Good old Dave, the ladies' man. Sorry, I didn't mean to do a demolition job on him. Why did you do a proper job? So he wasn't even a very good copper. But not a thief. Sorry? Not the sort that would nick old ladies' bits of jewellery. Not from what I knew of him. A lousy copper, a pervert, but not a thief. Too bad an epitaph, is it, Constable? I took the car without him knowing. He'd fallen asleep and I wanted some cigarettes. Someone had blocked my car in, so I took his. I hadn't driven it before, and, and after I got the cigarettes from the garage, I decided to go for a ride in it. It was exciting to drive after my little car, and I kind of got high on it, seeing how I could handle it. I didn't know I'd hit the old man. I swear it. I didn't know I'd hit anyone. I knew I'd hit those dustbins or whatever. I, I knew I'd taken that turn too fast. When I got back to the flat, I woke Roger and showed him the damage I'd done to the car. It was then that we saw the blood. I got kind of hysterical and Roger said we should report the car as stolen. So we did and went back to the flat and phoned the police. At the time, I didn't know I'd hit anyone. Otherwise, I would have stopped. And I hadn't been drinking. I hadn't had a drink all night. Is that it, is it? The time is 11.26. I'm concluding this interview. If you'd like to make a formal statement to the constable here, I'm going to confirm all this with Mr Massey. In the meantime, you'll have to wait here, I'm afraid. In the cells. Thank you. You'll be pleased to hear, my sweet, mm. that I'm in the clear. If that nasty little policeman phones, tell him I was called away on urgent business and we'll have to wait. You do like sticking your tongue out of people, don't you, Roger? Some, only some. If anyone else wants me, I shall be here and there and then straight to a very boozy lunch. I thought we were lunching today. Ah, yes. Tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. And collect this for me, would you? There's a laugh. Yeah, it's fine. Why didn't he use his radio? I don't know what. Well, he's there checking out the Manson place. He sees the other car. Why didn't he use his radio? What are you saying? Oh, I don't know. I'm just painting pictures or something. Well, he gets out to go to the car and chummies onto him before he can use his radio. Yeah, but he gets out of the car 
and wallop he gets it here where there's blood but no pellets here i go thank you sir that could have been thumped gun butt or something sir we won't know for sure till after the post-mortem whatever but he ends up over here so either he staggered there under his own steam and Chummy followed him, or he was carried there and dumped. What would be the point of that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Slow us down, hide the body. Jack. Pull it. Who knows what goes through your mind when you blow someone's head off? Yes, one of the things I want to do, of course, is to protect Shelby's widow. She's already given us permission to have her telephone calls intercepted. Uh, and I've arranged for a man to stand guard outside her house to keep the press and TV boys away. So, no doubt I shall get the usual complaints at the press conference this afternoon. Yes, sir. Indeed, I will, sir. Yes, um, thank you. Yes, I wanted to see you. Uh, it's just to say... I'm pleased this business with Roger Massey has been sorted out. Well, the girl's made a confession. I'm just waiting for Roger Massey to confirm it, which, of course, he will. Whereupon you, no doubt, will charge him with falsely reporting the theft of a car, wasting police time... Conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, making false statements, and anything else that I can think of. Because you know, sir, and I know, he's bought that girl off. Unfortunately, you can't prove that. No. Not without a bit of luck. And I'm due for some. Who knows? Did you get my six? Is there anything I can do? Yeah, you can stay out of my way. Since you asked, there is something you can do. Quiet, shut up. Shooting this morning of Police Constable David Shelby. Eustace is one of three men suspected of having taken part in an unsuccessful bank robbery in London, in the course of which a security guard was shot and seriously wounded. I cannot warn the public too strongly that this man is in possession of a sawn-off shotgun. You bloody lunatic! Shut up! Shut up! I want you out of here! Out! There's no point waiting. He won't be back until God knows when. Yes, hello. No, he isn't. Yes, thank you. Upset you, has he? Yes, if you must know, I'm pissed off with him. Pissed off. Listen, I heard about that policeman. I'm sorry. Yes, thanks. It's not good. Look, would you tell Mr. Massey that the longer he plays silly buggers with me, the longer his girlfriend will sit in the cell? It's not much of a threat, I know, but I've been up all night and I'm not at my best. You should have asked me. I knew he couldn't have been driving that car because I saw him. Saw him what? At the Sherwood Club. Not in it, outside, sitting in her car. Whose car? Her car, I said. What do you mean, Miss King's? Miss King, the flavour of the month. Who do you think? What do you mean, you saw him? I was there, with a friend. Another pain in the door, Doyne. We had a row. We left early. As I was leaving, I happened to see Roger sitting in her car. He was probably waiting for her to finish or something. She wasn't working that night. All I'm saying is that he couldn't have knocked the old man down because he was in the car park. Why didn't you say this before? Because I wanted to see him dangle for a change. Are you sure it was him? I mean, why would he sit in the car? Why wouldn't he go inside? I don't know. Probably because of the money he owed her, that Bowman person. Three thousand pounds. He must be mad. Hmm. I heard that he'd uh, paid her off. He gave her a cheque, if that's what you mean. What, you mean it bounced? Well, if it didn't, I don't know why not. There was nothing in the account. I should know. I keep the books, if you can call them that. So, he signs a cheque Friday night for £3,000. The bank can't clear it till Tuesday morning because of the weekend. And it doesn't bounce. Hello? No. 
No, but he'd like to know about Tuesday. Yes, I'll write it down. No, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, he can't get here now. Yes? Thank you. Okay, I will. Yes. Goodbye. You know what I think, Miss... Um, Hamilton. Hamilton. I've got this theory that for every bit of bad luck, you get compensated by a bit of good. Is that what they call lateral thinking? How would you like me to buy you a cheeseburger? Yuck. See, Mullet's got his flowers, then. You can be an insensitive sod at times, Jack. Yeah, well, maybe it is time I hung my boots up. I'd like to tell you a little story, Miss King. Stop me where I go wrong. Once upon a time, there was this parasitic prince who owed a lot of money to the wicked witch of the casino. Now, the prince, having a witty turn of mind, thought it would be a jolly jape to pay back the wicked witch with her own money. So, with the help of Lady Julia, who was beautiful but knowledgeable in the ways of the two broker's men, Tommy and Les, he does the business. But in order to keep the wicked witch off the scent, he needs an alibi. So, he gets the beautiful Lady Julia to drive round the countryside in his chariot, making a lot of noise and throwing the number plate out of the window so that Mr Plod, the policeman, will take out his thumb from his mouth and point it directly to Prince Roger, who thereupon will admit, yes, officer, twas I that caused the public nuisance. He'll then pay his £50 fine and have a cast iron alibi. But, unfortunately, the beautiful Lady Julia lays low a little old peasant. Well, Prince Roger, he says, I'm not going to carry the can for this. So he and the Queen Mother paid off the beautiful Lady Julia. Nearly the end. I have here a warrant to search your apartment, where I expect to find the best part of £2,000 and a few other odds and ends. Now, I can either break down the front door, or you can give me the key. What's all this, then? I was taking a liberty, Gov. Looking for your keys. I'm not that blind, Constable. It occurred to me, well, they'll be emptying Shelby's locker. And if he did take that jewellery, and they find it, well... It could bring more grief to his widow. That's... That's what I was thinking about, yes. And you were to go and remove it, were you? If it was there, yes. You change your tune more times than a Barry Manilow recording. One minute you're king of the rule book, turning your nose up at me because I tell one or two little porkies. The next minute you're an avenging angel, wanting to break into Shelby's locker because you don't like thieves, whatever their persuasion. And now you turn out to be Mr Softy, wanting to break into it again to protect his widow. I don't understand you at all, Constable. Maintain position, but do not intercept. Repeat, do not intercept. 
accept. Dessert, madame? Just coffee. Monsieur? Um... That looks nice. Have a bit of that. Good afternoon, Inspector. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Why don't you have some? No, thank you, madam. I've just had a couple of eggs on fried bread. I'll sit down and join you for a moment, if I may. Do you mind? Thank you. Peach tart, please, Michelle. Nasty business, this hit and run, madam. Still, all cleared up now. Roger does know he acted rather foolishly, don't you, darling? I was just trying to protect Julia. Yes, very noble, sir, under different circumstances. Uh, yes, well, thank you, Michelle. I was wrong, and I expect to be punished for it. Bravo, sir. Bravo. Oh, dear. You haven't got the time on you, have you, sir? Uh, no, sorry. I understand, madam, that not only are you paying for the young lady's defence, but you're also setting aside sufficient funds to compensate the poor victim's widow. Well, under the circumstances... And, and I understand that you're setting up a fund for the widow and children of P.C. Shelby with a personal contribution of £5,000. And they say that money isn't everything. Well, I think I'll leave you two good people to enjoy your creme de menthe fraps, or what have you. Oh, yes. There was just one other thing. Roger Massey, I'm arresting you for robbery with violence at the Sherwood Club during the late evening of Monday last. Your accomplice has made a full confession. Now, you're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. Do you understand? Do you? Yes. Jolly good. Sorry about that, madam. It usually comes as a bit of a shock. It's all right, so there's no rush. Finish your afters. Twenty-five, sir. Any hostages? We believe there are two, sir, and Mr. and Mrs. Darwin, the occupant of the house. Has everyone been evacuated? Most of them, sir, except the family number 36 refused to move. Refuse? They have no choice. Get them out. I don't care how you do it, just get them out. Yes, sir. Yeah. There you are. Right. You've all got your positions, and let me make it very clear. I know he's done one of ours, but if we can help it, not one shot, not one. Understood? No, no, you 
fine, it's all right. It'll only take a couple of minutes. Look, I'm not mucking about in here. Don't muck me about. Just sort it out. She can't breathe. Shut up. Shut up. You wanted me to. Hmm? One of the hostages has been taken ill. A woman. Apparently, she suffers badly from asthma. Jim Allen has persuaded him to do an exchange. Mm -hmm. The two hostages for one of us. He wants you. Just when I was looking forward to an early night. Apparently, he can... Uh, he can trust you. You really enjoyed saying that, didn't you, sir? If you are prepared to go in, try and persuade him to come out with his hands up. Oh, right. I was going to try and persuade him to come on holiday with me. Anyone got a vest? Good. He's coming, sir. Yeah, here he comes now. Yeah, he's on his way to you. You see him? Have you got him? Yeah? Well, that's all right. Just let him come. Jack Frost. Where are you? Let them go. That was the deal. What's this all about, Rummy? I want a car and I want petrol and I want that lot out of there. Now don't be daft, Ronnie. You know that they'll never give it to you. All right. All right. They want aggravation, I'll bloody well give them... <laughs> Come on, you bastards! Listen. I done some bad stuff in my time, but I didn't kill that copper. I was at Bet's place, pissed out of my mind. Have you seen her? You've got to be pissed to be in the same room with her, never mind the same bed. I didn't set foot outside the house until I saw it on the telly. Go and ask her, she'll tell you. Well, if, you'd, if you didn't do it, Ronnie, what are we doing in here? They reckon I shot a copper, one of your own. I show my face down there. Wallop! They'll put a bloody grey hole in me. It frightens people, see. That's why we took it when we done the bank. You go in there all hard and wallop. You pop one in the ceiling, it frightens them. And they hand it over quick. That's why we had the gun, in and out, quick. We didn't want to hurt the bloody guard. He decided to play the hero, and it all went wrong. Besides, I didn't do it. I didn't want to hurt anybody, for Christ's sake! And you won't want to hurt me, will you, Ronnie? Hmm? So why don't you put the gun down, you know, before we have an accident? I didn't kill that copper, I'm telling you! Right. I believe you, Ronnie. No, I do. I believe you. Yeah. But it's them. You trust me, don't you? It's why you asked me to come up here, because you thought you could trust me. I am bloody scared. I don't want you hurt. 
and I don't want me hurt. So, let's go downstairs, get this sorted. You better not let me down, because I am warning you, if you've been having me on, if they start anything, I will blow your bloody head off. I will, I will! Don't do that, <laughs> Listen, the pathologist wants to see me. Thinks I might have come up with something on Shelby. Fancy coming? Or have you seen enough mutton for today? Uh, lost anyway. Right then, how do you mean it's all wrong? Well, Constable Shelby was shot here in the back of the head. Well, that's all right, that's fine. But it's here, this exit wound. It just isn't right for a wound made by a shotgun. So, I took some x-rays. See here, along with the shotgun pellets in the skull, there are irregular fragments of metal here and here, you see? Yes, what are you saying? Well, I'll have to make further tests, but what I'm saying is that he was shot twice. Once with a rifle or a handgun, and then with a shotgun. You mean at different times and by different people? Come off it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that as far as I can determine at the moment, he was shot two times in the head and with different weapons. Whether or not by a different assailant, I can't say. But why would the same man shoot him twice with a different weapon? Well, that's your job, Inspector. But to me, it would suggest the second shot was fired in order to obliterate the first. I saw the man raise the gun and aim it at the inspector. I saw the inspector raise his hands as though to protect himself. I also think he shouted something at the same time. I considered his life to be in danger, so I fired. There'll be a full inquiry, of course. And a great many questions asked, and rightly so. I cannot pretend that I wasn't hoping for a somewhat happier conclusion to this affair. But you can expect my full support and the support of every officer in this division. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Muller would like to see you. Open it. I said, open it. David Bailey, wasn't he? Wait. I don't understand. To see pictures of your wife like that. 
must have torn your guts out. You understand, all right. You killed him, didn't you? You shot him with your handgun. And then you blasted him with a shotgun to make it look like our friend Eustace had done it. And I'm gonna prove that's what you did. All right, all right, just at the moment, all I've got is a load of ifs and buts and maybes. But when I find that bullet, when I match it to the gun that you were issued with, which I will, I'm gonna tear you apart. I saved your life. Did you, Constable? Did you really? Inspector! Yes. There you go. You'd be well pleased with that. Me? I'm delirious. Absolutely wrong. About my jewellery. You see, the man came to read the electricity, and you do hear such dreadful things nowadays. So I asked the Meals and Wheels lady to put it under the mattress for me. I hope I haven't caused that young policeman any trouble. It's so easy to jump to the wrong conclusions, isn't it? Yes, love. It certainly is. Jump in, I'll give you a lift home. Oh, thank you. There you are. 